This lesson explores sound from a point of view that it needs a medium to propagate and how we hear it. We saw that sound is created by vibrations. These vibrations cause molecules in the air or gas or water or liquids or even solids to vibrate in the same pattern and keep spreading till they reach our ears. So we can say that sound is transmitted from the vibrating object to the ear. Transmitted means taking something from one place to another. This transmission is called propagation of sound and it requires molecules to transmit the vibration. Therefore sound requires a medium like a gas, liquid or even solids to propagate. It can't do so in vacuum because vacuum means there is nothing and therefore there are no molecules to transmit the vibrations. It also means that in space you will not be able to hear anything. Astronauts communicate using headsets which are something like mobile phones when they are in space. In the previous video, we have seen many examples of sound propagating through air. So in this video, we will see some examples of sound through water and solids. For water, here is an innovative experiment we did and please do not try it at home unless you have a waterproof speaker because if the water goes into a regular speaker then it will get spoiled. I have taken extra precautions by putting it in three layers of Ziploc bag. In this experiment, I have a fish bowl full of water and there is a mic here to record the sound. Now I will switch on the music on this Bluetooth speaker and you will be able to see the music as well because of the dancing lights. And I will put it in the water and let's see what the mic picks up. There, you can hear the music when this is in the air but as it goes into the water and as it goes deeper you can still hear the sound but it gets fainter. That's also because now the sound is first travelling through the water and then through the air to reach the mic. <laughs> But what if I put the mic into the water? Why not? Let's try it. Wow, you saw it actually became so much louder because now the sound is only travelling through one medium and that's water. So now we know for sure that sound does propagate through water. In fact, sea creatures use various sounds to communicate. Some whales can create sounds that travel up to 16,000 kilometers. And just to give you a reference, 16,000 kilometers is about 5 times the width of India. So now let's see how sound travels through solids. And no, we can't consider music coming through headphones because this is happening because of electrical energy. The easiest way to check it is to put your head on the table so that your ear is touching the table and then gently tap or scratch the table with your nails and you will be able to hear the sounds. Another experiment that is always given in books is with two paper cups and a strong thread and you can make something that resembles an old style telephone. I would say that for short distances it's probably more reliable because there are no network issues here. All one has to do is make holes in the middle of this base, tie something to the thread and then tape it up so it doesn't move. And now stretch the thread between the cups. The phone mic is ready hello, to hello, use. Hello, hello. Now we have also attached a speaker to the mic to show you that sound is really coming through and to let you hear the quality of the sound because first we'll try with smaller cups and then with bigger containers. Hello, hello, The bigger containers have a larger vibrating base, so the sound input and the sound output both should be better. And it was true. You can hear the comparison here. Hello, hello, mic testing. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now with me, most of the time you will find a twist to the simplest of experiments. And in this one, here's the twist. As a kid, I always tried to figure out if I could turn this around corners so that it goes from one room to another. But I failed because if you tie it to a nail or any hard object, 
it will stop the vibration there itself. So how we solved the problem is that we fixed it by using a rubber band so that it can let the vibrations continue past the bend. Now we can stand at any angle and maybe we can also go across two bends but that you can check out and let me know. For now we stood at 15 degrees to each other and then went all the way to 90 degrees and the sound was still as good. I left the cup here to show that without the cup his sound could still be picked up by the mic but it wasn't that loud. You must have noticed when there is lightning you always see a flash much before you can hear the thunder. It obviously means that sound is slower than light but it also means that it has some speed. The speed of sound in air is 340 meters per second. In water, it is around 5 times more. It's 1500 meters per second. And in solids like iron or steel, it is around 15 times more than air, around 5000 meters per second. So it seems that more molecules in the medium means faster the sound travels in it. And it follows some kind of logic if you think about it. Solids like steel, which have densely packed molecules, the speed of sound is 5000 meters per second. In a liquid like water, which are moderately packed molecules, speed of sound, 1500 meters per second. Gases like air, which have loosely packed molecules, the speed of sound is dropped to 340 meters per second. And in vacuum, where there are no molecules, speed of sound, zero. There is no sound that travels. Light, on the other hand, travels at a speed that is phenomenal. It travels at 300 million meters per second. Ears are the organ in the body that sends sound. The biggest part of the outer ear is what we call ear. But then there is a lot more that's happening inside. Let's start from out and go inward. This part is called the pinna or the auricle. And this is the auricular lobe, generally called the ear lobe. The hole in the outer ear that you see leads to the ear canal, which is also called the external acoustic meters. Actually, this canal continues all the way inside till the back of the mouth. It is first blocked at one point by the eardrum. This is also called the tympanic membrane. This is the most important part that actually receives the vibrations that are collected by the ear. And it's also very delicate. And this is the reason you should never put any object in your ears. You can easily damage your eardrums. Beyond this starts the middle ear. The ear canal beyond the tympanic membrane is called tympanic cavity. This continues towards the mouth and is called the eustachian tube that connects to the upper throat and the back of the nasal cavity. This controls the pressure within the middle ear, making it equal with the air pressure outside the body, which is on the other side of the tympanic membrane. Sometimes if your ear hurts in a plane or a car when you are traveling at high altitudes, you are asked to suck a toffee and that action helps to open up the eustachian tube to equalize the pressure on both sides of the eardrum. And when you do that, your pain actually disappears at least most of the time. Coming back to the middle ear, it has three main bones in this sequence moving from the eardrum. The first is the hammer or malice, the second is anvil or incus, and the third is the stirrup or stapes. It will be useful to know that stapes is the smallest bone in the human body. It's just about this much. Can you see the mark there? 3 mm by 2.5 mm. These three bones together are called ossicles. They are connected to each other and control the amplification of the sound vibrations that travel from the eardrum to the inner ear through the oval window. The inner ear has one main spiral shaped part called the cochlea and that is filled with fluids. Along with the cochlea, there are also three fluid filled semicircular canals that help you keep your balance. The vibrations passed to the cochlear fluids cause electrical impulses in the nerve cells and these are carried to the brain via the auditory nerves. The brain then decodes these impulses as sound and that's how we can hear things and understand them. So now let me tell you three more things about the ear. First, the ears are shaped like this as you can see. So this is to catch the sound and if you want to catch a little more sound, you can even put your hands like that and you can actually hear it a little better. Second, because it's shaped like this, from the back if you see, it's shaped away, it's facing away. But from the front, it's catching sound. So if I shut my eyes, I can tell whether the sound is coming from the back or the front. You can try it. Third, we have two ears with which we can tell which direction the sound is coming from. And that happens like this. If you are making the sound and I, I, and I turn like this, then the sound is coming from this side. So this ear is closer, so it comes first. And the other ear, it will take a little longer. And the brain is so amazing 
that it can process this split second of a difference and say which side the sound is coming from. In the DIY, I will show you how to make a working mock-up of the ear. But first, let's do a recap to this lesson and then move on further. Sound needs a medium for propagation. Sound travels through the air as the vibrations of the object make the air molecules vibrate in the same patterns and that vibration reaches our ears. Sound needs a medium because it needs molecule to propagate from one object to the ear or a recording device. Sound can travel through gases, liquids and solids but not in vacuum because vacuum doesn't have any molecules. Speed of sound in gases is 340 meters per second. In liquids like water, it is 1500 meters per second. And in solids like iron and steel, it is 5000 meters per second. Light travels at 300 million meters per second. That's why you see the lightning first and then hear the thunder much later. In space or on the moon, since there is no medium like air or any other gas, sound cannot be heard because it cannot propagate itself without molecules. Human ear. We hear because of our ears. The ear that we see on the face is just one part of the complete ear. The ear is divided into three parts. Outer ear, middle ear and inner ear. The external part of the outer ear is called pinna. This is what we see on both sides of the face. This collects the sound vibrations. Then the pinna leads them to the ear canal which carries the sound that reaches the eardrum. That's called the tympanic membrane. Beyond this is the middle ear and that has the ossicles. It's a collection of three bones that vibrate and amplify the vibrations from the eardrum to the inner ear. The three bones of ossicles are hammer or malleus, anvil or incus and stirrup or stapes. The stapes is the smallest bone in the human body. It is 3 mm by 2.5 mm in size. The last part of the stirrup transfers the vibration to the inner ear through what is called the oval window on the cochlea. The inner ear has two fluid filled parts called the cochlea which is spiral shaped and the other part has three semicircular canals. The semicircular canals have fluids in them and these help maintain our physical balance. The sound is processed in the inner ear and then sent to the brain as nerve impulses through the auditory nerves. The brain receives the signals and decodes it as sound. Because of two ears on either side of the head, we can tell which direction the sound is coming from. This is an exciting DIY and very easy to make. But let me be honest here, sometimes it works perfectly without much effort and sometimes it takes a lot of effort. It seems to have a mind on its own. But it will work, so don't give up when you try it. Take three long lead pieces which you can either take out of a pencil or from a box of lead for clutch pencils. For this project, the lead I used is 2B. Now use some sandpaper to flatten one full side in all the three lead pieces. Sandpaper is a thick paper which looks like it has sand from the beach stuck to it on one side. It comes in different grades of roughness which are given in numbers like 50, 80 or 100 grit, GRIT grit. Less number means more roughness. For this project, in the shop you can even ask for 80 to 100 number paper. You need a 9 volt battery connector with a crocodile clip on the positive wire. Now you need another clip with a wire which has an open end on the other side. Now if the lead is pointed, then on the pointed side, attach the wire as shown. Attach the other open wire as well to the other lead. It's important not to put a crocodile clip on the lead because it will make it too heavy and stop the vibrations we require. Put a drop of glue from the glue gun on the table and then keep the other end of the lead in it and leave it standing while it is supported by something because it takes a long time. Do the same for both. Note that my table top is granite so nothing happens to it. Even on glass it's fine but if yours is wood or a material that can get burnt then you should do this on a steel or a ceramic plate. Once that has dried and become hard you can take a paper or plastic container and stick the leads on the other side of the container as shown, about 3 cm from each other. You will have to hold it for very long or once again you can support it with something. There are two important things here. Firstly, both the flat surfaces should be facing the same side. Secondly, they will need to be tilted at an angle so that once the bowl is fixed to the base, which I will show later, the two leads should be parallel to the ground and not angled up or down. So this might require some trial and error. So make sure you see the whole experiment before you start following it to make the DIY. You can see that the leads are standing at a slight angle on the container. 
Now you need a steady base of about 18 centimeters by 9 centimeters. This could be a piece of wood or even an old hardbound book will do. You will also need a cardboard or a similar piece of hard material size 11 centimeters by 8 centimeters and you need a clothes clip. Put the clip on the cardboard and then move the board on the wood base till the clip touches the wood. This is the position you can glue the cardboard to the base. If the lead is stuck on the container, add more glue on both sides to make sure that the joint is stuck properly because otherwise it can come off because of the vibrations. Now you can take this container and fix it to the board with the clip. The flat sides of the lead should be facing upwards and once again they should be parallel to the ground. Glue a 9 volt battery to the base but make sure the positive and negative terminals are placed so that they are easy to fix to the connectors since the connectors already fixed to the LEDs. Now you need to connect these clips to a 3.5 mm male to male aux cable. It could be a stereo or actually a mono would be better but we had a stereo one so we used it. This current position of clips was wrong but I kept it here so that I can also show you the correct version later. Now you can put the other end into any recording device which has an aux input. Otherwise you could just connect it directly to a small speaker as well. If you don't have a small speaker and you want to make it, there's another DIY on the channel which shows you how to make a simple speaker as well. The link is given in the description. Now the circuit gets completed when the third LED is put on top of the other two LEDs because LED is a good conductor of electricity. I had to later move the outside clip to the middle and then it completed the circuit. The flat surfaces should be touching each other and they were made flat so that this third piece doesn't roll off plus somehow they vibrated better when the two that are stuck to the container were flat. Now if you record it or if you have connected it to a speaker you will be able to hear what you say into the container. Hello Mike Tessay 1, 2, 3, 4. Maybe you will have to shout a little to be clear but you can hear it. Since we've recorded it now let me play it. Wow exciting. Let's do it again. Mic testing, mic testing, one, two, three, four, five. And here you can see how it is vibrating. Hello, hello, mic testing, one, two, three, four. What is happening is that when you speak into the container, the vibrations of the base of the container are transferred to the two lead pieces stuck to it. This makes the third one jump up and down along with the vibrations. Every time it jumps up, it breaks the circuit. And when it falls down, mic it testing, completes the testing, circuit. One, two, this way the electricity five. flows in the same pattern as the sound hitting it. And when the pattern reaches the recorder or the speaker, it once again becomes the same sound that we can hear again. The disturbance is because the connections are not so perfect, especially when the lead vibrates. You can even try out different positions of the third lead to see what works best for you. Now let's just take a look at our full working ear. This is like our outer ear which collects the sound. This is like the middle ear that transfers it to the inner ear. And this is like the inner ear that changes it into electrical or nerve impulses to take it to the recorder or the brain that can understand and play back the sound. Just to give you a visual reference, here I am showing you how to attach an LED in the circuit. Make sure the longer leg of the LED which is positive is connected to the positive terminal and then complete the circuit how it was earlier. Now when you talk Hello, 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 hello Hello, hello, hello. Now you can see the LED flicker in the same pattern as your voice. Things required for the DIY project. Three pieces of 2B pencil lead, 80 to 100 grit sandpaper, sound recorder or a small speaker, 3.5 millimeters male to male stereo or mono audio cable, LED compatible with 9 volts, 9 volt battery, crocodile clips and wires, 9 volt battery connector, plastic container, Wooden or any other plank, 18 cm by 9 cm, cardboard, 11 cm by 8 cm, clothes clip, glue gun. I hope you liked the lesson. We'll hear and see a lot more in the next lesson that talks about the characteristics of sound.